Now we move to item four, the public forum. Now, Graham Robinson, um, I would invite you to join us at the table. Graham, good to have you with us um, this morning. Now, public forum normally allows for a five-minute presentation. I'm aware that um, what you're presenting to us are submissions that normally would have made, been made as part of the um, long-term plan submissions hearings process. Um, you would normally there have had three minutes as an individual submitter and five minutes submitting on part of an organisation. So I'm happy to provide eight minutes this morning as the total of those two submissions. We'll just combine that time into one eight-minute block. Um, and um, we're, we're pleased to have you with us and able to have you present to the meeting this morning. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I'll start with um, speaking on behalf of the Enabled Association. First of all, we'd like to acknowledge that there are a lot of difficulties the councillors have in trying to balance things to make decisions when viewpoints come from many perspectives. And we know that you have access to information the public don't. You also have to abide by rules from central government that um, determine how you make decisions and, and force outcomes. Um, I've been um, associated with some of the people here through the um, local boards, and I know most politicians are well-intentioned and desire to make a difference. What I'm asking, or what we're asking you today, is to vote against the draft LTP as, LTP as it is, because if you vote for it, you're saying you don't care about the less well-off in our society. Council is a monopoly, and therefore has a responsibility not to disadvantage residents. The inflation rate for the past 20 years has been between 1.5 to 2 per cent, depending on which information you get. The proposed rates increases are 4%. In reality, they're closer to 5% because you add on an increase on an increase. So I think it's 47.8% over the 10 years. Um, from 2006 until 2021 year, the rates have gone up in Christchurch an average of 6.1%. Um, I looked at my rates bills for my house between 2016 and the 2020 years, which is five years cumulative, Cumulatively, my rates have gone up 34.6%. Um, in England, there is a limit of 1.9% on councils' increase in rates per year, and that is increased to 4.99% if they have council um, elder care housing. Um, the other thing in the LTP, which seems to be missing to me, and I couldn't find, perhaps someone could redirect me, there have been high increases in property values, which will add to rates increases, and therefore there needs to be some sort of mechanism which sets a limit on what people will be charged year on year, so that what may be assumed to be 4% this year doesn't spiral out to 7 or 8% because their properties have gone up se severely. Um, the other thing, I, I don't believe your budget allows for windfall gains. I live in Addington and there are lots of houses there being replaced. For example, I can think of two houses on 1,000 a, a square metres. They're being replaced by eight townhouses. The council will gain from the fees of um, those houses being built, but also what was rates of maybe 2,500 per house will be replaced by at least $3,000 per townhouse year on year. So what may have been up to $5,000 is replaced by 18000 or more. Um, your decision will determine the quality of life for many families and you only have to look at the media or listen to the media and they tell you about all the different things that people are suffering. The council was trying to um, cope with things like COVID, the earthquakes way back, the, the mosque, all those things interfered with your revenue stream. But the people of Christchurch are also dealing with those difficulties and they are still trying to recover from the same things. And I think that they're being hit when they're down by the proportion of the increases that are being proposed. Um, the thing you should be aware of is if you take more off people with one hand, you're likely to be having to give it back through welfare with another. Um, you'll see there's a, a, a very poorly drawn pie graph on the, on the screen above you. It's, it's poorly done because th those uh, divisions on the right-hand side should actually be in fifths of the or tenth of the to total circle. So if you take that as a pie or a pizza, the first line going up diagonally towards the right 
that's the um, the baseline of a thousand. Yep. Take take the circle for example as ten thousand dollars disposable income after people pay their pay their mortgages, etc. So that first line up to the diagonal right is a thousand dollars for rates. That that was set back in um, yeah two thousand and um, five. With the increases that have happened over the past fifteen years, we've taken to the second line up towards that's it, and that. Um, that's $2,216 for rates. What you are proposing will take it down to the third line, roughly $3,250 in 10 years' time. The, 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 the plan says that it's only $2.76 or something a week. The reality is, over a 10-year period, it's an average of about $15 per week. And by the time we get to the end of it, it's $30 a week. And, and I think if people knew that those percentage increases add up, they would be less in favour of them actually happening. I, I know a lot of people want to make differences to the environment, and there's a lot of things that need to happen with climate and, and things like that, but the, the proportion of rates increases are, uh, is far too high for what people can afford. And you, like the pie, if, if you take another piece, that means there's less to be paid for other things in the environment. They, they, they're going to have less to pay for food, less, less to help their families, uh, and that's our argument. What, what's being taken by the council is, is too much and is going to leave the families with a lot less. And that's not just the very bottom, that's even middle class people. Um, I'll jump to my own personal um, submission. I suggested that the red zone land be given back to Naitahu. Several reasons for this. One, Naitahu was cheated, if you look at Kemp's deed, Naitahu was cheated out of the amount of reserves they were entitled to receive back in the 1850s. And they were supposed to have got 10% of the available land at the time that the, the government bought and were, were given much less. I do not know if that's been rectified through the Waitangi Tribunal and I don't know if Naitahu would actually want the land. The reason I suggest that it be given is that the, it would rectify that that grave error many years ago. Second reason is there's a proposal to spend $800 million over the next 10 years to redevelop that land. Pass that away. We don't need it. We don't need to spend that $800 million if we don't have it. And I also believe that um, the attitudes of Maori versus Pākehā towards conservation of land are far superior. They would do a far better job than we would. Um, I've got no Mary affiliations, I've got no Mary blood, but I think there's a wrong which needs to be righted. Um, the other thing that I just want to chuck in the, in the mix that I didn't uh, mention in the um, submission is there are things like the multi-use arena, which um, are going to cost the council a lot of money. Um, they, I believe they're going to put a roof on the top of it. And if they didn't have a roof, perhaps they could have put a hotel beside it, which would have allowed viewing of the sports field. But um, it's just there needs to be an additional use other than just the sports field um, for a, a building of that size, which is going to cost the people a lot of money to maintain. All right, Thank now that you. brings us very neatly to the end of the um, eight minutes set aside. Some points um, very clearly made and well illustrated in the um, submission. And thank you very much indeed for taking the time to come along and, and speak to the submission this morning. Good thank time. you. Thank you. All right, so um, just for councillors' information, the um, written submission um, is available on the hub to support the um, verbal presentation that we've just heard as well. All right, so um, moving on.